One of the biggest talking points is, of course, Weston McKenney. I mean, what we do know is that he's not included with the squad for the le last latest match after breaking protocol. He's now been sent home to Turin as a result of violating these team protocols. I mean, this is the statement that he put out ahead of that last match. Um, I do want to get everyone's thoughts on McKenny. So, Jimmy, I'm going to start with you. We've heard comments from just about everybody, including past players like Landon Donovan, who said his actions are almost beyond repair. I mean, where do you stand on this? Well, I definitely understand where Landon's coming from, being his teammate and how serious he took being a part of the national team. Now, there's one side of me, the jokey, lighthearted side of me, Poppy, that thinks this guy's just living his best life. He's trying to have it all. There's no rules for Weston McKinney. But then there's the other side of me, like 99.9% .9 of me, that goes, what are you doing? We didn't qualify for the World Cup in 2018. You're a key player. This is our first home game of World Cup qualifying against an opponent that thinks they have their number, our number, and they do to a certain extent. We just saw it the other night, and they played very well tonight as well. So I'm a little worried about Canada moving forward. But with regard to Weston McKinney, he has to know better. As he has said multiple times, it was a selfish move. It was very selfish. He was only thinking about himself. And yes, players need some balance in their lives, but he was only here for 10 days. Three games in 10 days, that's what we needed out of him. So to say I'm disappointed is probably a bit of an understatement. He has to be a better professional. He has to be a better leader and role model for the team. He's an emotional leader for us. He's one of our clutch players. So for him not to be here for us in these last two games is, is unacceptable. And I hope that he learns from it and that he comes back even better whenever Greg will ultimately let him play. What I'll add on to that is with the fame of him playing at Juventus, and the privilege that he has comes this responsibility. He doesn't get to live a normal life. He gets caught in just about everything he, he does. He's being watched at all times when he's there. And part of coming into the national team is that escape from your club team environment. All the changes, all the controversy around Ronaldo leaving and all of the things that Weston McKinney got in trouble for last season. Now, I know a number of guys that have broken team rules and protocols in the national team, in long camps, when they need to sneak out for a little bit and do their thing. But now it's a little bit over amplified because of COVID, because of the implications that it could have, because you know this is a time and place, because you know the team failed in the last qualifying cycle. It seemed like this team had rounded the corner, that these players were willing to put this team first. It showed in their fight on the field, but off the field, you have to have the same control and actions. And I think he ultimately let the team down. Is he the only one that's done that so far in, the, in this camp? I don't know, probably not. But it, he is one that you expect to lead by example. He's one of the more experienced players. He's playing at the biggest club and we need him on the field. And now we don't have him. The good thing is I think we were able to move past this with some of the changes that they're going to put into the lineup for tonight, the excitement around this game. The one thing I will say about these players is that they're all in high pressure environments. It's not just the distraction of Weston McKinney. Christian Pulisic doesn't get to have two bad games in a row when he's playing in England. These other players don't get to have two bad games in a row at their clubs because they're in high pressure environments. And that's why I think they have the ability to rise to this challenge and the pressure and the controversies that's surrounding this team. They have the ability to overcome that adversity tonight. Yeah, I'm caught in the middle here. I, I find it, and I, and I actually respect a lot of the comments from former players, including you two as well, from former coaches, from Landon Donovan, from, from everyone really, past and present. And it's frustrating at times because social media has a habit of jumping on this kid's back. Let's not forget he's 23 years old, and I know he's made mistakes before, but he's 23 years old, and he's had a lot given to him early in his career, um, a lot of success and very quickly you rise and he has had issues at Schalke, he's had ha issues at Juventus and uh, this is probably more than the first issue that we've seen with the national side. However, this kid plays for the national side. Everything he does, even with his club football, you can tell he lives and breathes for, to play for his national side. He already missed one qualifier. Do I think it's right to have sent him home? Maybe Greg had to because of COVID protocol. I'm not sure what the issue is there. Uh, maybe he had to because he felt like he needed to show this leadership going forward for the next, what, five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 years, however he's involved in this club. But I wanted to see Weston McKinney back in the lineup today because a Weston McKinney who was already pushed out of that last game, coming back into this lineup had a big point to prove. And he will when he does come back into it. But I'm a little disappointed that he's not involved and he was sent home. However, it is a crazy time. I worry about players' mental health. I worry about young 23-year-olds being forced into COVID protocol, not seeing family, not seeing friends. And I think that's where people need to just 
just take your foot off the pedal a little bit, criticizing people when it comes to personal issues. Where is he right now? And is he the only player who broke protocol? I highly doubt that, because if one player goes out, there's three or four. We've all been there, and I'm quietly confident Jimmy Conrad was one of them <laughs> who had jumped on the bang wagon to go out there and have a fun. But it's World Cup qualifying. You could have kept it together. He didn't. He made a mistake. I feel like he's already been punished. This punishment even more may be due to COVID. I would have liked to have not been. Well, just very quickly before we move on, no doubt a massive miss from the lineup. Heath, do you see him being back with the squad for these next set of qualifiers? I do. I think he's a key part of this team. I think he lost a little bit of respect from the group. I think he has a lot to prove from the uh, to the fan base, again, to prove that he's all in. We saw in the 2018 qualifying cycle, there were so many questions about people's dedication to the national team and whether they cared about wearing that crest and what it meant to represent the crest and fight for the crest. Yes, this was a mistake. Has it happened before? Yes, it has with him. But with the national team, I think he will come back. He'll earn the respect back to, of his players through his play. In the, in the Nations League, he wasn't particularly good on the field, but he rose and created a huge moment, scoring a huge goal. And I think those are the ways that he's going to win that trust back from the team. And in fact, I could imagine the team getting a result tonight and sending him a message saying, hey, we have your back. We've got you. We know you made a mistake. We made mistakes too. And we're going to carry you through this difficult time. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.